Washington State head coach Jake Dickert. Jake, uh, we're heading into a new season here where there doesn't feel like there's a lot of firsts. You know, everything yeah. heading into the, every year you've had, I felt like there's been something, but everything feels solidified now. Just how does it feel heading into this season? Well, it feels good. I mean, we're just in that winter bulk phase of strength and conditioning, and we're starting to work into spring ball conditioning. And obviously, spring ball is right around the corner in late March. So you just get to this time, and you want to see the football team on the field. You want to identify some strengths, some weaknesses, some things to, that we need to work on. But it's going to be the most competitive uh, probably football roster that we have since I've been here. And I think that's a really positive thing. Yeah, and you talked about getting to know the see the team out there. There's going to be a lot of new faces this yeah. year. You lose guys like Ron Stone and Brendan Jackson that have been key cogs for a while. Just what do you think the strength of this year's team is going to be? Early, I know it's early to say. Yeah, but. I mean we've talked about a lot a lot about that as a staff where because we don't have the big presence, the big returning players and names, uh, Brendan Jackson, R.J. Stone, Shaw Smith, Wade, Cam Wards our team is just shaped differently. And I think the competitive nature of that at every position, quarterback, running back, who's gonna replace that wide receiver, defensive end, obviously defensive backfield linebacker, it just brings the most out of everybody around them. And I think competition naturally does that. But we set out on a three year time frame when we started this. Let's not take shortcuts, let's build for the long term. And a lot of those guys that have been waiting and developing in the wings, it's their time. So excited to see all the work that they've put in and how it really equates to a positive spring season. Yeah, you, you often hear coaches talk about you need those four years to start yeah. fully get your, I guess, players in there, your recruits in there. We're kind of creeping up on that point for you now. Do you think this team will more reflect Jake Dickert as a whole? Yeah, well, I think it's going to reflect, reflect Washington State as a whole. You know, I think when anytime you're stable at the head coaching position, your culture is allowed to build the messages that the players here is allowed to be built on and and we've done it the the old hard way we there's no shortcuts to it the transfer portal obviously has brought about its challenges but also its rewards so you got to use it you know to your advantage and you still got to find what's right for washington state what right and fits for pullman washington and how we can keep getting better and i think that's what we've done you're going to hear you know, a lot of names, uh, Kyle Maxwell, uh, Keith Brown, uh, Parker McKenna, uh, Chris Hudson, Tony Freeman. A lot of these names are going to be household names come fall that have to kind of come in and elevate and let's let them be them. I think that's a big part of this time of year, and, but a lot of those guys are really high on what they can do. Yeah, and boy, I, I feel like in your time there's been so many headlines that you can't control, you know, yeah. the Pac-12, now you have this Mountain West agreement. Just yeah. how's that going to be going into this play of you're kind of a Mountain West team, yeah. but you're not. I know it's a conference you're very familiar with. Well, we're not a Mountain West team. I'm going to be very clear on saying that. I know my book someday is going to be a bestseller because there's been a lot of situations that have happened to me in the first going into year five as an assistant and now the third as a head coach. But I think I get to live out every day what I preach, Travis, and that is developing through discomfort, not allowing adversity to overcome my attitude or my effort level. So we're really embodying what it means to be a Coug and live through transition and change. When change happens, you can do one of two things. You can spend all your energy trying to fight the, the old or all your energy trying to build the new. And from Kirk Schultz to Pat Shun on down, we're just spending all our energy building the new. And the number one thing about that was retaining our roster. That's one thing that was very important to us. I don't take the credit for that. I give the credit to the players. They have built a connection that they want to do this together, and I think that's so vitally important. Yeah, and really did keep the roster intact, but also kept the coaching staff yeah. intact. First year you're going to head into with your coordinators. Is yeah. How much does that help heading into this season? Yeah, I think continuity is really freeing for the players uh, to know that yeah, we're going to do things the same, but we also have the same people in place to say, hey, these are the things that we weren't efficient at. Here's where we need to grow. Here's where we can add. And how do we utilize this skill set? John Mateer is very different than Cam Ward. Mm -hmm. uh, Zevi Eckhaus is very different than Cam Ward. So how do we utilize their skill sets to build the offense around them? And we're very positive about some of those pieces that we have. Uh, but I think great coaches – don't just say, hey, we're going to do same as. We're going to utilize the skill set of the players. We're going to learn, grow, and develop, and we're going to find ways to get better. Yeah. And you brought it up. It was a question I was going to ask. You know, every fan, they always yeah. want to know the quarterback. Yeah, yeah. Who's going to be at quarterback? Is this an open competition right now? It's wide open. And I think the one thing that we did, we knew we had to bring in a veteran quarterback to compete with John. Uh, and Zevi just really embodies that with his career at Bryant. 
But also, we weren't willing just to sell out and say, hey, come in and start. We have a guy that we love that has developed both on and off the field that is wildly talented, but will be different. We'll run John. We'll put him in the RPO game. Uh, Zevi has a very quick trigger on the things that he can do. So we'll go all the way up to the week before Portland State before we announce a starting quarterback. And that's going to bring the best out of each other. And we've been open and honest with Zevi and, and John. And the best man will win. And that's going to make our program better. Yeah. And um, you, you said a lot of new faces on this team. Are there some guys that maybe Cook fans should be on the lookout for? Yeah, I think absolutely. You know, some just in the transfer pieces, you know, the Kyle Maxwell on the outside is finally that 6'3 plus big body wide receiver that we need. Chris, Chris Hudson, Tony Freeman, even a Josh Meredith, a returning guy, to replace Lincoln Victor's production is going to be vital for us. A guy you got to get a little bit of a taste of last year, but Leo Pulasi, I think, has all the intangibles to be a really great tailback. Uh, in our program. Keith Brown has been phenomenal, a transfer from Louisville. And just kind of some of the young guys, a, a Khalil Laufau, uh, an Ansel Dinbu. I mean, some of these guys at the defensive front, we're moving Nusi Milani out. We bring in Cyrus Webster. I think we're going to be as good of a defensive front as we've had in my time here. Okay, Coach, this week is an uh, important week for some of the former Cougs. You got three guys at the Combine, yeah. Shaw Smith Wade, Jaden Hicks. Brennan Jackson, have you talked to them at all heading into this process? Perhaps? Yeah, we have. And I have, every time I talk to them, I just say, be you. Mm -hmm. You know, what I love about those three names in particular, like BJ Shaw, Jaden, we develop those guys. You know, now when we go out there and recruiting, we say, hey, our developmental process works. Obviously, BJ went through the full six years. You know, Jaden Hicks in a short period of time. And Shaw's got to learn from the Jalen Watsons and the Derek Langfords and the Amani Marshes. So... Just really proud of those guys. When you come here with a goal and a dream, we hold you to those high standards. But when you come in and you believe in a process, you give everything you have to it, you can reach the ultimate pinnacle. And I think these three guys are going to hear their name called uh, in the draft in about a month and excited about uh, seeing them kind of blossom into doing what they've always wanted to do. Yeah. All right, spring football right around the corner. Yeah. How excited are you for that? Couldn't be more excited. I, I know, uh, like I said, the Taylor Sports Complex, the indoor facility is being built. And this time right now, we don't have any place to go but outside in the cold. And there's a toughness and a mentality aspect that this team needed. But just excited to finally get them back out on the field and play football. Uh, we're starting to kind of ramp up into that phase. We've got two more weeks before spring break, and then it's time. And spring ball is my favorite time as a coach. You get the practice. You get days off in between. You get a chance to really teach. So excited about just still creating the mentality for this football team, but also figuring out a little bit some of the pieces that we have. I know it's early, and this might be a from right field question here, but the 2024 <laughs> Cougs, what do, what do you think they're going to be remembered as? I think right now we're really focused on always us, never them. And it's kind of a mantra that says no matter what happens to us, we control the outcome. And you know, we've talked a little bit about it's a – Guys with a bunch of nobody mentality that can be put together to really be somebody. And just excited about it. I think our basketball team has embodied that so far with Kyle Smith and this crew. A bunch of guys that they don't care who gets the credit. They go out there, compete. They have a toughness aspect to them that's really, really important. And you see their passion for each other on the screen. I think that's what you're going to see in this football team this year. And once again, whether it's the offense scoring 50, the defense coming up with big plays, Dean and Nick making big plays in the special team realm, However we get it done, you're going to see us winning as a team. And I think that's going to be the right magic for us in the 2024 season.